Hi, I'm Sean from Tom Woods Drive Shafts. When people call us with technical questions, one of the most common things they ask about is why is their drive shaft vibrating? In this video, we're going to go over some of the common reasons and go through kind of a guide on how you can diagnose and troubleshoot those drive shaft vibrations at home. When it comes to drive shaft vibrations, there's really two main causes, two main sources. What we'll refer to as angle related vibrations. So that's basically drive shaft running in proper angles. There's a video on our website, but also on our YouTube page called uh, Drive Shaft Angles Explained. That's worth a watch. So you can kind of understand some of these concepts. The other type of vibration you might get from the shaft is what we call a dynamic vibration. Dynamic vibrations are what most people think of when they think of vibrations. And it's something like an imbalance. It's a product of weight and speed and centrifugal force. On the whiteboard here, we have uh, the two types of vibrations we're talking about and some of the common indicators of those vibrations. So starting with angle related, that's the easiest one I think to kind of get out of the way and check. Um, an angle related vibration, uh, first and foremost, if your Jeep or truck or whatever runs smooth and fine, and then you install a lift and boom, right after installing that lift, you have a vibration, you've changed the angles on the drive shaft and you have an angle related vibration. Um, that is typically going to be felt, a lot of times people will describe it as more of a shudder than a vibration. It's something that comes in at low speed. So that could be from takeoff, zero miles an hour, up to usually about 40 miles an hour. And then as you go above 40 or so and uh, kind of get more to like a coasting highway speed, it goes away. Um, that indicates an angle related issue. If it's throttle or load sensitive, so that means you're accelerating from a stop you're going uphill, something where you're heavier on the gas and there's just more load on your drive, drive train. That is usually an angle related issue. So the inverse of that is if letting off the gas makes it better. So that means you're accelerating, you're going up a hill and you let off the gas a little bit. And then that shutter, that vibration subsides, that is typically an angle related vibration as well. So moving on to dynamic vibrations, um, here are some common indicators of that. So one would be that it's more of a high speed issue. So where with angle related, it's something that is more low speed, uh, maybe up to 40 miles an hour. Um, dynamic vibration is usually going to be something high speed. So that probably comes in around 50 miles an hour. And then the faster you go, the worse it gets. So it starts at 50 miles an hour and then at 60, it gets worse at 70. It's even worse than that. That indicates dynamic issue. So if you recently installed new ring and pinion gears, and you develop a vibration right after doing that, that's an indicator of a dynamic issue. For example, if you had 410 gears and then you install 513 gears, your drive shaft is really spinning 25% faster than it was before at the same vehicle speed. So the RPMs are higher and the centrifugal force is higher and you're gonna get things at lower speeds that you might not have really got until you hit 80, 90 miles an hour. If you're running a vehicle that has an old stock drive shaft in there, uh, there's a pretty good likelihood that drive shaft's worn out. Worn out parts are gonna be loose. They're gonna rattle around. Um, that rattling at high speed is going to cause vibration. A real good indicator of that, and this can be on a new shaft as well, but if you have a vibration that's maybe subtle and as time goes on, as the months go on, it gets worse and worse, that means something is wearing out and it's getting more loose and it's rattling around more. So if it gets worse over time, that's a dynamic issue uh, because the angles aren't changing over time. Um, and then kind of where letting off the gas makes it better with angle related, the opposite of that with dynamic, if um, letting off the gas makes it worse, that's usually a dynamic issue. And more specifically, that comes back to loose worn out parts. What can really be happening there is you can have some loose parts where under load, there's tension on them and they're basically self-aligning and they're running kind of straight and rigid. You let off the gas and they're kind of free floating and then they rattle around and the vibration gets worse. Anytime somebody has a dynamic issue, one of the first things I recommend that they do is they check their drive shaft. You wanna put it in neutral. And what you're doing there is any kind of tension that's on the drive shaft, you're releasing that tension and then you'll really be able to feel those loose parts. And then you just scoot underneath the Jeep and you give each shaft a good shake. You wanna do that on the front shaft and the rear, maybe try both ends of both shafts. Um, just shake everything and make sure that everything feels tight. Really what you wanna feel is when you shake that shaft, it should feel rock solid. If you can feel it wiggle, if you can hear it clunk, if there's any kind of movement, something's loose and something needs to be addressed. When I talk about speed as it relates to the drive shaft, I'm of course talking about RPM. 
it can be helpful to know what those RPMs are at certain speeds. And the speed of the drive shaft at a certain mile per hour really comes down to the size of tires you have and the gear ratio on your ring and pinion. We've created a calculator on our website where you can input your tire diameter and your ring and pinion. And then there's basically a slide bar where you can adjust it to different miles per hour and that will show your drive shaft RPM at those speeds. We'll put a link in the description of this video to that page. A couple of things about drive shaft RPM is it has nothing to do with the RPM of your engine. Um, it's really a matter of tire diameter and gear ratio. It doesn't matter if you're redlining it in second gear or your low RPM in third gear. If your vehicle's going a certain speed, your drive shaft is going a certain speed. Ideally, from a drive shaft perspective, when we do the numbers for tire size and gear ratio, at 60 miles an hour, we want to have the drive shaft RPM at about 2,500 to 2,800 RPM. An interesting thing to note is when it comes to centrifugal force on a drive shaft, so think you just weld a weight to the outside of the drive shaft. Um, as the speed increases, the force of the imbalance increases what's called quadratically. So what that means is every time the speed or the RPM of the drive shaft doubles, the force of that imbalance is going to quadruple. When you get up into those higher speeds and especially higher drive shaft RPMs, the increase in centrifugal force of an imbalance from maybe a five mile per hour increase is gonna be a lot more significant than it was in these lower speeds. So if you're driving 85 miles an hour plus on the regular, which you probably shouldn't be, but if you are, um, you're a lot more likely to have those dynamic vibrations. And if you're geared low, so your drive shaft RPM at those high speeds is abnormally fast, you're a lot more likely to have those vibrations. A little bit of imbalance is gonna make a way bigger impact at these higher RPMs. One important thing to point out here is just coincidentally in these for instance numbers is around, let's say 80 miles an hour, if you hit 3200 drive shaft RPM, when we build and balance a drive shaft and we put that in our balancer, crank the dial up as fast as it will go, it's right around 3200 RPM. That doesn't mean that as soon as you hit 3300 RPM, the drive shaft isn't balanced anymore, but once you exceed that speed, we're just unable to test it. Another place where drive shaft RPM can really tell us a lot is sometimes people will tell us they have a vibration at those lower speeds, which are usually angle related, that they go away at higher speed. And if they say that they have a vibration at 20 miles an hour, at 20 miles an hour, drive shaft might only be spinning six, seven, 800 RPM. That's really slow. Basically at those low speed, the drive shaft is spinning so slow that there's really not enough centrifugal force to cause an issue. What I want to demonstrate here is how balance weights and an imbalance really doesn't show up until higher speed. So what I've done with this is this is a new balance drive shaft and I've taken two of our largest balance weights and I've just taped them on here. So it's definitely out of balance. And if we turn this up to about seven, 800 RPM, which is about uh, 20 miles an hour for most vehicles. So that's seven, 769, it's still running pretty smooth. You can't really see, you can't really hear too much, but if we turn it up a little faster, we're at about a thousand. That's 1300, 1500, still pretty smooth. 16, 18, that's where we're starting to really hear it. 2,000, 2,400, and at that about 3,000 RPM, you can see it really just shakes like hell. 